Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We have got at least three recipes we are going to be working on today. I've done not very much to prepare for today's food preservation shenanigans other than print off the recipes. My jars are clean because we're going to be doing some canning. And oh, I did go ahead and this is something I did the other day though, not something I did today, but this was kind of in preparation for today. I shredded a whole bunch of zucchini that we are going to start turning into some yummy recipes. We also need some bell peppers. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out of the freezer refrigerator today. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna work on preserving this zucchini in a few different ways. And I have never preserved zucchini in any of these ways we are about to do today. The first one we're gonna do is a zucchini relish that you can use just like you would use a dill pickle relish or a sweet relish. You could top it on brats or put in potato salad, egg salad, deviled eggs, whatever you would use a relish for. I've never made a relish before, so I'm excited to do this today. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do because I'm making this recipe is I did not realize that we need our onions to sit in some salt for a little bit to draw out some of the moisture along with our bell peppers. The zucchini has already been sitting and drawing out moisture for the last day, but the onions need to go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by chopping four cups of onion. And I think it said, two bell peppers, but my bell peppers are small, so I'll probably do three or four. I am getting this recipe from my canning cookbook. I can link this canning cookbook along with all of the canning equipment down below if you're interested. The other recipe we are gonna be making is mock pineapple. I've been seeing this recipe. I've been seeing Rachel from that 1870s homestead make this for years and years and years, and I've never had enough uh, zucchini to make it. So today's the day. We're gonna take this product that we're gonna make and we're actually going to go ahead and make a pineapple cake with it too. So we are going to not only make the mock pineapple, we're going to turn it into a cake. This recipe calls for two cups of crushed pineapple and we're gonna use our zucchini pineapple, mock pineapple in this cake recipe. I also have all these peppers I need to preserve up. I also have some hot peppers I would like to get canned possibly today and some banana peppers. I've never <laughs> canned any of those either for I have banana peppers for like sandwiches and things like that. So we will see if we get to that today as well. That is on my list. Today is an in the kitchen kind of day. So we'll just keep checking things off as we go. So I need these onions diced pretty finely. So I'm gonna peel these onions and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in the food processor just to make my life easier. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the bell peppers. So I'm just gonna give them a rough chop. Compost bowl. These, this kind of day is one of my favorite kind of days where you just get in the kitchen and spend a ton of time enjoying the process of preserving food and it feels like it's been a while since we've been able to preserve food that comes directly from the garden and this is only the beginning we are going to preserve so much stuff over this year the garden is producing like crazy and this is so fun i'm excited to share with you these recipes because i am blown away by how they turn out we do get to all the things on the list today and the we get so we get to the pickled peppers we get to the relish the we make the cake and it is such a delicious and easy cake recipe. I hope you try it. This relish recipe says to chop all the vegetables by hand, but I wanted a really fine texture. That's why I'm going with shredded zucchini and I'm using the food processor for the onions and peppers. I'm gonna process the onions and peppers separate so that I can measure out the proper amount of each one of these. And I'm gonna use the food processor just to make this a little bit faster. I've got a colander here and I'm going to measure my onions directly into the colander into the sink so that it can drain into the sink. Let's see. Let me 
need four cups of onions. One. I think this is going to be the perfect amount. Four. Now we're going to take salt and we're going to put the salt on the peppers and onions and we're going to have that salt draw out moisture from these peppers and onions. And while this sits here, we will get going on the mock pineapple. I might as well go ahead and get the pineapple measured out for this. While it's here, this pineapple has been draining since I shredded it the other day. So we're just gonna get it in here anyway so that this recipe is all measured out. So that was two, three, we need 12 cups. Now that we have our relish veggies soaking, we're gonna get going on the mock pineapple. I've got my Dutch oven here. We need to make the pineapple mixture. So in this Dutch oven, I just store it in my, <laughs> my oven because I don't have a ton of space for it. Get it wiped out. Let's go ahead and put our ingredients in here that we need. So I will link Rachel's video down in the description box, the one I'm following for this. And let's see, the first thing we need is 48 ounces or 46 ounces of pineapple juice, which is exactly one of these cans. Now we need three cups of sugar. One and a half cups of lemon juice. And we're gonna warm this up until the sugar dissolves. We need 12 cups of shredded zucchini for this recipe as well. And I don't know if I have 12 cups over there, but I've got a whole basket here. So let's go measure out the zucchini to see if I need to shred any more zucchini because I definitely have more zucchini than just what I have in this bowl if I need to. Yeah, I don't think I have 12 cups. I am squeezing out the excess liquid. There's a bunch of it in the bottom here. So that's four cups right there. Probably have one more cup in here and then I will shred some more zucchini up. five cups. I just washed my food processor and I will go ahead and use that to shred the rest of the zucchini we need. I was just thinking that if you shredded all yellow zucchini, because that's what I have over here, it would look even more like pineapple than using the green zucchini. I have more than just these five right here. And if I need to, I can run out into the garden and get even more. So we will definitely be able to get our 12 cups here. I'm gonna grab a new cutting board because I don't want to use the oniony cutting board for the zucchini. This has been one of the best zucchini years I've ever had. Last year, I had hardly any zucchini, so I wasn't able to preserve it up in any other way other than shredding some, freeze drying some, and then we ate most of it fresh. 
And this year I have a bumper crop, so not only are we able to eat these beautiful small tender ones fresh, but we are able to get them in different forms preserved up for use later this winter. If they have pretty mature seeds, I'm cutting that out and those will go to the chickens. So we had five cups in here. This is 12 cups right here. Absolutely perfection. 12. Our juice is simmering, which is perfect. We're going to get our zucchini in here. And this needs to simmer for 20 minutes. So this is perfect. We officially emptied this basket of zucchini minus this one. This one's going to the chickens because it's got a really hard skin. I probably could have used that, I guess, in this, but that's okay. But we emptied this basket. If you're with me, when we made all those zucchini breakfast freezer meals, we probably had 50 pounds of zucchini. So that is encouraging that we have now emptied that basket. There will be plenty of zucchini still to harvest throughout the season, but hopefully they won't get quite so big and we'll be able to eat most of them fresh. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on the brine for the pickled peppers and for our relish. I'm gonna use the same brine for the pickled peppers and for the relish. So it's equal parts of white distilled vinegar, 5% acidity. When you're canning, you wanna to check to make sure on the label it says 5% acidity, which mine does right there on the label. Four cups. Whatever brine I don't end up using today, I'll put in the fridge and as other veggies come in through the garden season, I can use this brine for that. Now we're gonna cook the salt, sugar, and vinegar together until that melts. I used sea salt in this brine. The recipe calls for pickling salt. The only difference between pickling salt and say a table salt is pickling salts don't have iodine in them. And my sea salt is not iodized. It's just sea salt from the ground. So I don't mind using that in my canning. The, what iodine can do in canning is it can kind of change the color over time. And if you want it to look pretty in the jar, it's best to use a non-iodized salt. So here, this has been simmering away, so we can go ahead and get this jarred up. But before I do that, I kind of want to give my kitchen a little bit of a reset. It's gotten a little bit messy here, and I want to get the dishes in the dishwasher that I can get in the dishwasher. All these goodies are going to be going to the chickens and they will be grateful for it. I should mention the Zesty zucchini relish that I'm making that's on page 233 in this cookbook has a bunch of other ingredients other than just the vinegar, salt, and sugar. It has horseradish, turmeric, nutmeg as well. I am going to leave those things out because I just want a cleaner 
I don't think that's the right word. I just want a more pure relish flavor. I don't really want horseradish. Josh isn't a big fan of it. I did put a hot pepper in there so that that will give a little bit of heat to balance the zinginess and the sweetness from the vinegar and sugar. But I don't want to add nutmeg or horseradish or turmeric because the turmeric is more for color than flavor. So maybe I should, maybe I will add the turmeric actually because I'm gonna be doing banana peppers with that brine as well. And I would like those banana peppers to have that bright yellow color. I've never canned banana peppers before. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, that feels a lot better to kind of have this kitchen tidied up a little bit. Here are the peppers we're gonna be canning. This pineapple smells so good. My mother-in-law the other day made a zapple crisp where she took zucchini, peeled it, deseeded it, and turned it into a crisp, and it was called a zapple crisp. And it was really good. The texture held up just like, it had the same kind of texture like an apple would. It tasted a little different, obviously, because it was zucchini, not apple. And Josh really enjoyed it, as long as we called it a zucchini crisp. If we called it a mock apple crisp, he, it just messes with his brain a little bit. So I think when I make this pineapple cake today, I'm gonna call it zucchini pineapple cake. And I think he's really gonna like it instead of trying to pretend it's mock pineapple because I think it's gonna taste good even if we call it zucchini pineapple cake. So I'm just rereading my recipe here. All right, so I did not realize this. This was my mistake. When you're, when you're canning or cooking, it's best to read the recipe all the way through before you get started. And we are supposed to simmer the onions, the peppers, and the zucchini in the relish in the brine for a good 45 minutes, it says. So I did not realize that because the video I watched, they took the relish mixture, like the, the vegetable mixture, and they packed that into a jar and then they poured the brine over the top of it. They did not simmer it together. I don't think that affects the safetiness of the canning. If you are a new canner, definitely, definitely, definitely follow the recipe to the T because canning is a science. <laughs> and I know that I've canned long enough that I am comfortable omitting spices. That's not gonna affect the safetiness of it. When you're talking affecting the safetiness of it, it's when you're messing with the quantity of vegetables to vinegar because the vinegar is what makes it an acidic product, which makes it safe to water bath can. So you cannot mess with the ratio of vinegar to vegetables, but I am totally comfortable omitting spices. But I didn't realize it needed to, to simmer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut up my peppers. These are already washed. And I'm gonna get these jarred up and then I will take the brine out of there and I will pour it into the jars with the peppers. Because I doubled this brine recipe that was in this book. What I'm doing now is looking in this cookbook for a pickled pepper, res pickled pepper recipe so that I know what canning time I need to process my banana peppers for. So I'm gonna do the pickled hot pepper recipe because I have banana peppers and hot peppers in here. And this recipe doesn't call for sugar. It's just vinegar and water. So maybe I won't use that. No, I do wanna use that brine because I want some sweetness to this. I've changed my mind. For the banana peppers, well, I keep changing my mind. This is what happens when you don't go into a canning day with 100% of a plan. I have two plans and then these peppers were kind of a question mark whether I was gonna get to them or not. Since I'm canning, I figured I might as well. Let me see if I can find a banana pepper recipe in here. Or I'm gonna do this hot one and I'm not going to use the sugar brine. I'll pour half of that out and use it for something else. Well, 
while I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm gonna do, one thing I know I can do is get these peppers chopped up. So while I'm chopping, I'm gonna figure out a plan. Now that this mixture has been sitting, I'm gonna rinse off some of the salt. And now I'm gonna squeeze out any of this moisture and as much of this moisture as I can get. Our brine is all dissolved and beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove half of this brine from this pot because we only needed half of it. And there's marks on the side of my pot so I can see where the half mark is. And we'll use this for something else. Now I'm gonna turn the stove back on. Then we're gonna take our relish mixture and put that in here. Now we're gonna let this simmer together. And while this is simmering, we are going to can up or jar up our pineapple. And I wanna clear this countertop, so I'm gonna finish cutting the rest of these peppers. I finally figured out my plan for these peppers, and that's just going to be to do a simple vinegar brine which is kind of like what you would think of that you would get at the store if you were to buy pickled banana peppers, just a simple vinegar, no sugar brine. I am gonna try to take out some of the juice when I pack these zucchini pineapple bits into the jar. Oh, it smells so good. I'm supposed to leave a half an inch headspace. Headspace refers to from where the top of the jar is to where the food product is. And on this, we want about a half an inch. So we're gonna make sure we get that on each one. I just preheated the oven to 350 because we are going to make that pineapple cake right now, now that I have this done. I need to get the canner out too so that I can get these as soon as they're jarred up and have lids and everything, I can get them on the stove canning. But I want to get that pineapple cake in the oven so that can be cooking while we finish our other kitchen tasks we're doing today in the kitchen. Trying to get a good balance of solid zucchini to juice. I don't want there to be in some jars a ton of juice and then in some jars a ton of zucchini. My goal is to kind of get the, the ratio of what you would expect crushed pineapple to be from the store. And I do think if you used all yellow zucchini or summer squash, that would be the best play here. Or to peel the green zucchini too. That could have been a good option as well. I didn't even think about that. But if it was all yellow squash, you wouldn't even know, I don't think, that it's not pineapple. I'm gonna use my 30 quart bowl to can 
my all of the things we're gonna be canning today. You don't have to have in your water bath canning a specific pot that is a water bath canner. You just need a pot that you can fill, you can put the jars in and fill the jars about an inch over or two inches over with water. Now I have been seeing people use this year, kind of for the first time, I haven't really noticed it that much, a steam canner and I think, let me know if any of you have used it and if you like it, I think I might invest in a steam canner. It seems like a whole lot less to deal with than a whole entire pot of water. I can link a steam canner down below, the one that I'm looking at, if you're interested in even seeing what it is if you've never heard of one. But if you have experience pro or against steam canners, please let me know because I think that might be my next canning investment. I think it's gonna be a lot less to manage than water bath canning. Now the thing is though, when you're using a pot that does not have a rack that goes in the bottom for canning, you don't wanna set your jars directly on the bottom of the pot because it's too close to the flame and they can crack. So just take a towel and lay a towel down and that way they'll rest on the towel as opposed to resting on the bottom of the pot. While my pot is filling with water, I'm gonna go ahead and get the lids on these. One of these I'm gonna set aside because we're gonna make the cake next and I don't need to can it if I am going to just make a cake with it. The recipe calls for two cups of crushed pineapple and so we're gonna use two cups of the zucchini. The reason you want to clean your lids is so that you can get a good seal and I always feel around to make sure there's no chips or anything. I'm going to put my favorite canning lids on. I can link these down below with a discount code. I don't have to sterilize or boil my jar lids or my jars anymore. That is not required if you are going to water bath can for over 10 minutes, but I do like to make sure everything is clean from the manufacturer, especially the lids. So I just wash the lids with some warm soapy water. And then I always run my jars just through the dishwasher before I can in them, just to make sure everything is nice and clean. The reason I'm using this pot and not my water bath canner pot is because I couldn't find it. <laughs> I went out to where I usually store them. I have two of them and I could not find it. This water is very, very warm. We have a hot water tank under our sink. These jars are very, very warm. You want the water and the contents of your jar about the same temperature to reduce the risk of breaking jars. I think I could actually fit more jars in this 30 quart pot than I can in my water bath canner. Once this water comes to a full boil, I will set the timer for 15 minutes. That still needs to simmer for about 20 minutes. So while that's simmering, we'll go ahead and make our cake. This is one of the easiest cake recipes I have seen in a long time. It's really a matter of just dumping everything into a bowl and mixing it together. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a quarter cup of sour cream, a half a cup of oil, three eggs, vanilla. We're going to mix that together. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One and a half cups of granulated sugar. Two teaspoons baking powder. This is a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna put four of them. One teaspoon baking soda. And our two cups of pineapple, plus the juice.
This recipe is called to be baked in a nine by 13 baking dish, but I think because there's not a frosting that goes on it, you just make whipped cream for it. I thought a bundt pan would be a lot prettier. So I'm going to make it in a bundt pan. Hopefully it turns out. I'm gonna grease this really well. A lot of you guys have recommended using, it's called, now I can't remember what it's called, but something like baking magic or something like that. And it has flour and the oil in the spray. And I guess you can make that. So I need to look into that. But this smells incredible. This was super easy to whip together. I'm gonna get this in this bundt pan. And it says that it needs to bake for 30 to 40 minutes. I'm thinking probably 40 because a bundt pan, I feel like is deeper than a baking dish would be. But if this works, this is a great way to use up zucchini for a party or whatever it might be. Because all of these zucchini jars are gonna be shelf stable. And I could just pull them out and whip this together in less than five minutes. This is going in the oven. Our relish is done simmering on the stove and it smells incredible. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get it into these jars. These are four ounce jars. I don't want any more than that because when I open them, I'm not gonna need a ton and I don't want you know a big jar of relish just open in my fridge for a long time. So we're gonna can them up in these jars. So this needs to can at the same time as the pineapple. And my water is not boiling yet, but it's very hot water. These are very hot jars because the contents of this is very hot. So I'm going to get as many of these into that canner that will fit as soon as I have the lids and the rings on. You all know the drill. You're going to fill the jars up to the appropriate amount of head space that the recipe calls for. The reason there's a head space recommendation is because it has to do with how the product in the jar heats up and how much space it needs for proper sealing. So we're going to fill it up to the appropriate headspace and then we're going to wipe the rims. We wipe the rims because if there's food or sugar or anything on the rim, when you put the lid on, then that could inhibit a good seal. So we will put our, our lid on. I always use a new lid when canning that is recommended. And then I will put a ring on. You can reuse the rings as many times as you want because the rings aren't going to be left on the jar for proper canning they are just used during the canning process so new lid reused ring and then we will process it for the amount of time it calls for all right this is the last one so now i'm going to get as many of these in the canner with the pineapple as i can these jars are very hot this water in here is very hot I won't be able to get all of them in here, but I'll be able to get a few. So we'll just get as many in here as I can. So both the relish and the zucchini pineapple need to can for 15 minutes. So that's why I can can these together. Okay, I figured out what I'm gonna do with these peppers. And I'm gonna use the pickled hot pepper recipe on, even though the banana peppers aren't hot, this is the recipe I'm gonna use. And I need a total for this recipe of 16 cups of peppers, and I need a ratio of two to one for the vinegar to water. I don't have 13 cups of peppers, I don't think. I don't, not even close. So I'm gonna measure out how many peppers I have into here and the reason i decided i'm going to cook them you could cold pack your peppers i could take these peppers and put them directly into my jars and then fill my jars with the vinegar water brine solution but i'm not going to do that because you can get more in a jar if you cook them first there's something that happens with the pepper they release something and it shrinks them just a little bit so I want to get more peppers in my jar so that it takes up less shelf space and less jar space so that was three that's four I'm gonna turn the stove on five six so I'm about half so I'm gonna put 
half of what this recipe calls for vinegar and half of what it calls for for water. I'm doing the same ratio, so I'm not worried about it being safe or not. I'm just basically cutting the recipe in half. I'm gonna add my water and a few cloves of garlic. Now I'm gonna cook this for five minutes once it comes to a simmer, and then we'll get these in the jars. So this cake is almost done. Or the timer went off, but we have to check to see if it's done. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna give it five more minutes, and we're still waiting for the peppers to cook. While those are cooking, I'm gonna grab something out of the freezer and get that packaged up. While I have time in the kitchen, I might as well go ahead and package up these garlic pucks, because these have just been in the freezer, and I wanna get them packaged up so they're not making the freezer smell like garlic. So these are the garlic pucks that are just garlic and water. No, there's no water, it's just garlic. The other garlic pucks that I did last year I added some oil and these ones I didn't. In the bottom, these are the garlic skate pucks. I'm gonna put these in the same container so I can use them exactly the same way. If I'm gonna use garlic, it doesn't matter if I use the garlic skates or garlic. Okay, this feels good to get this packaged up. And I think I'm gonna go put this back out in the freezer. And then this is our garlic butter. I wanna get this packaged up. Into the freezer, these go. Now we can jar up our peppers. Our canner is boiling, so I now have the timer set for 15 minutes. So these peppers are good for putting in salsas or sandwiches, anything you'd want a pepper pepperoncini, banana pepper, you can use this. I'm starting by packing the peppers in and not really any of the brine. Once I've got the peppers in the jars, I'll go back and fill the jars with the brine. Just pulled the cake out of the oven. I'm gonna let it cool for 10 minutes and then we're gonna attempt to take it out of this bunt pan. It smells absolutely incredible. Our pot is done boiling for 10 minutes. What I did is I turned the stove off and I kind of let the pot just cool down for about five minutes before now I'm gonna go ahead and take the jars out. And I have some cloth over here, what are those called placemats. <laughs> I have some placemats and I'm going to just take these out and I'm gonna set them on the placemat and I'm gonna let them cool here for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I will label them what they are. It's pretty obvious for me to tell what they are coming out of the canner. I'll label them, I'll take the rings off and then I will put them downstairs. And our cake has been out of the oven for 10 minutes, so I need to try to take that out of the bunt pan. So we'll see if we're able to do that. All the jars are out. Now I'm gonna get the peppers in here and I'm gonna can these for 10 minutes. So it is the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this pineapple or mock pineapple cake out of the bunt pan. I've been having a hard time lately getting cakes out of a bunt pan. So I do think I need to research making that magic release or, or cake release or something like that. Basically you make a paste of flour and oil I have tried doing the dusting the flour on the bunt pan before, you know, you spray it and then you dust it with flour and that doesn't seem to help <laughs> that well. So it did come apart just a little bit, but I think I can do a little bit of surgery and I just taste tested it there. And friend, this is a delicious cake. What a great way to spend the morning. We used up 24 cups of zucchini. We got 
22 four ounce jars of relish. We got two, four, six, seven pints of pineapple. What would you call that? Mock pineapple plus the one pint that went into the cake. And we have eight, nine little jars of pickled peppers. It is still really early in the day. And what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for my peppers to finish cooking, they've got another, well, they started boiling, so I set the timer for 10 minutes is I'm gonna cut myself a piece of cake. I'm gonna have my cake and my second cup of coffee. We did have to put this cake back together. We had to do a little surgery on it right here, but I think that's gonna be just fine. And I'm gonna have a warm piece of cake and my second cup of coffee while I wait for that canner to finish canning. Oh, look at that. So this is, I took the piece that kind of fell apart. That looks amazing. That's really good. This kind of fell apart, this piece, but I will definitely make this again. It's kind of like a light pound cake. I was just thinking about this cake. I like that it has a very light pineapple flavor. It's super mild. And I like that it doesn't have any cinnamon or anything like that like you would think of a traditional like zucchini cake or something like that. It's definitely a good twist on the cake. Perfect, it's gonna be really good. So after this comes out of the canner, I'm gonna go change and spend my afternoon out in the garden. It's not too hot today and it's still early in the day. It's gonna be the perfect time to go out into the garden and get a couple things done out there. So thank you friend for being here as we got these canning projects done. If you want any of these recipes, I will link them down below along with any of the canning equipment. And I can also link a canning playlist if you are interested in kind of getting a little bit more comfortable with canning. I can link some videos down there, some resources with some different canning projects I have done over the years. So thank you for being here. If you wanna watch a couple of my other videos, I'll pop some videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thanks for being you, thanks for being here, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.